Hook, a modern take on the tale of Peter Pan. Released in 1991 and directed by Steven Spielberg, Hook stars the great Robin Williams as Peter Banning, a family man who is more focused on his career as a lawyer than his family. And when Banning's family take a trip to London to visit Peter's adopted grandmother Wendy, Peter's children Jack and Maggie are kidnapped, to which Peter then finds himself in Neverland, where he learns that he is the real Peter Pan and that he has forgotten his legacy, and the only way he can get his children back is by remembering who he truly is. And through the help of Tinkerbell and the Lost Boys, Peter must take on Captain Hook, played by Dustin Hoffman, who has kidnapped Peter's children and plans to turn them against their father. In this fun, adventurous movie with an all-star cast including Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell, Bob Hoskins as Smee and Maggie Smith as Wendy. It's time to get hooked again by going back to this fan favourite by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about Hook, the movie that takes a new take on the Peter Pan legend. So let's check it out. Number 10, Changing of Studios. Steven Spielberg has always been a fan of Peter Pan, ever since his mother used to read him the book Peter and Wendy as a bedtime story when he was a child. And as early as 1985, Spielberg got to work on making a live adaptation based on Peter Pan. In the movie's early production days, the film was more of a traditional story of Peter Pan, based on the original book and Disney animated movie, with Peter and Wendy as children going on adventures in Neverland. Originally, the movie was being produced by the Walt Disney Company, before being passed on to Paramount Pictures, until finally the project was taken to TriStar Pictures, where the movie was set in motion with TriStar Pictures distributing the picture. 9. The story started over a drawing. Although Hook was originally going to be a modern retelling of the old Peter Pan tale, Hook's co-writer Nick Castle wanted to take a new angle on the old Pan mythology. And the idea of looking into grown-up Peter Pan with a middle-aged Pan now becoming a lawyer where he returns to Neverland without any memory of ever being Peter Pan came from his three-year-old who drew a picture of a crocodile eating Captain Hook. To which his son said, Captain Hook didn't die, he got away. This got the gears turning in Castle's mind, as he thought, what if all this time we had been fooled and that Hook has been alive after all? Castle's son would further ask his father if Peter Pan ever did grow up, which once again got Castle thinking, what if like all other baby boomers who are now in their 40s, Pan 2 had now grown up and what would it be like? So Hook became more of a sequel to the Peter Pan legend rather than an adaptation, with the story's main focus being about Peter Pan trying to repair his relationship with his children, particularly his son Jack. The new story really resonated with Spielberg, whom had explored themes of childhood abandonment and strained relations between children and their parents in movies such as E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Empire of the Sun. And such themes no doubt resonate with Spielberg, because when he was a child, his parents sadly went for a divorce. Number 8. Spielberg was, then wasn't, then was the director. So as mentioned, as early as 1985, Spielberg was on board to direct Hook, which at that stage was called Peter Pan, and was set to be filmed on sound stages in London. However, Spielberg dropped out of the project because his first child was about to be born, and Spielberg didn't want to make a movie in favour of being there for his son. And interestingly, round about this time, Spielberg was also going to work on the movie Big, but also left that project for the very same reason. In 1987, Spielberg didn't return to Hook's production, but decided to make Empire of the Sun instead. So Nick Castle was brought on board as the movie's new director, where he changed the story from being a contemporary Peter Pan story to a follow-up to the mythos with a grown-up Pan. Castle has a history in the industry, having co-written Escape from New York and directed The Last Starfighter, giving him worthy credentials for working on Hook. 
However, the movie's two main stars, Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman, weren't seeing eye to eye with the director. So Castle was given $500,000 to leave the project and still had his name attached to the movie as a co-writer. Where at this stage, Spielberg was now happy to return to the movie's production and jump back on board as director. And according to Back to the Future Part 2, Spielberg's son, Max Spielberg, would go on to direct Jaws 19. This time it's really, really personal. Number 7. Peter Pan of Pop In the mid-80s when Spielberg was developing Hook, he envisioned Michael Jackson as playing Peter Pan, which would have made sense as Jackson was also a fan of Peter Pan and at that stage Jackson was trying to break out as a movie star, having starred in the 3D Disney World movie Captain EO. However, Jackson lost interest as starring as Peter Pan when the story was changed to Pan, now being a middle-aged lawyer who was an absent father and had forgotten his past. I guess you could say the changes didn't resonate with him so he moonwalked out of the production to which the legendary Robin Williams took over the part in an unforgettable performance and definitely a standout role that lots of people remember Williams for. Number 6. Hook was going to be a musical. As with the Disney animated movie, Hook was originally intended to be a musical. Spielberg approached longtime collaborator and musician John Williams to write some songs for the movie, to which Williams did. However, as the movie's production went on, it was decided to make Hook a contemporary fantasy movie as opposed to a musical. So the musical aspect was dropped. However, two songs that were written by Williams with the intention of Hook being a musical were still used in the movie. Those songs being We Don't Want to Grow Up, which was seen at a school play at the start of the movie, along with the song When You're Alone, which was sung by the Maggie character halfway through the movie. I always thought that was weird, having a character break out into song halfway through the movie, despite there being no other musical numbers. But, oh well, it is what it is. Number 5. Carrie Fisher helped write the script. Spielberg felt that two of the characters in Hook felt underdeveloped, those being Captain Hook and Tinkerbell. So to flesh out the characters, he got help from some other writers. Marley a Scotch Marmo worked on Hook's dialogue. Marmo would work with Spielberg again with Jurassic Park. And none other than Carrie Fisher was brought on board to rewrite Tinkerbell's dialogue. After all, Fisher also had a career as a writer. And as we all know, she even has a cameo in the movie where her and George Lucas play the floating kissing couple on the streets of London. Hook actually has several cameos, including pop star Phil Collins as a London police inspector, Glenn Close as one of Hook's pirates in an unrecognisable role, and a young Gwyneth Paltrow played a young Wendy. Number 4. Action Figures So to commemorate the success of Hook, Mattel released an action figure lineup so kids at home can have their own Peter Pan adventures. And I love these figures and I can remember nearly having the whole set. My biggest issue though was the Peter Pan figure. Although they captured Captain Hook's likeness perfectly, I felt like the Pan figure didn't match how he looked in the film. He didn't look like Robin Williams. He was a lot more lean and slim and had slick back hair and a headband, making him look more like he's on his way to a disco rather than fighting pirates. But I don't care, I was just happy to have a Peter Pan figurine. I remember at the time there was some confusion as when Hook came out there was a Peter Pan animated series called Peter Pan and the Pirates, which also had its own figure lineup, which made things a bit confusing, but oh well, when I was a kid the more Peter Pan toys the merrier. And as you can see, I still have my Fud Butt action figure. And yes, I only knew the character was called Fud Butt because of the figurine. Number 3. Video Game Hook was released as a video game for Super Nintendo in 1991, in which the game's cover is really interesting, as like the action figures, it doesn't really match the movie. I mean, I guess for some reason they couldn't have used the Hook movie poster. In the Hook video game, gamers get to play as Peter Pan, as you set out on a quest round Neverland to save children whom have been abducted by Captain Hook, to which leads to a sword fight between Pan and Hook. The gameplay is easy enough, I mean it's not a standout game but it's still enjoyable and the graphics are bright and colourful, although I felt like Peter Pan in the game mainly resembles the childlike Peter Pan from the animated Disney movie. Number 2. Mainly filmed on sound stages. 
Despite a few outside scenery shots filmed for the start of the movie, Hook was mainly filmed on sound stages, with the magical scenery of Neverland and London being created on sound stages at Sony Pictures Studios in California. And I don't know what it is about some of the Neverland scenes, but it doesn't look like an organic outside world, particularly the Captain Hook pirate ship set. I always felt it looked exactly like what it was, a movie set soundstage. When the movie came out, one common complaint that people had was that the movie looked like a theme park attraction. And I think that probably comes down to the fact that you can tell most of the movie was filmed on sound stages. Now this isn't a criticism, but to me, the world of Neverland in Hook is lacking that grim reality seen on other sound stages sets, such as Yoda's Swamp and the fantasy world seen in Kroll. But I digress, maybe it was intentional for the world of Neverland to not look quite real and like something out of the imagination of a child. Hook was also a shoot that exceeded its budget and schedule, as originally the movie was given a budget of $48 million, but as filming took place the budget rose to $80 million, and the shoot was only meant to last for 76 days but actually lasted 116. But hey, sometimes for movies to be the best that they can be, more time and money is needed. I mean, just look what happened with Superman the movie. So before we get to number one, here are some bonus facts. Bonus number one, unused movie poster. We all know the beautifully illustrated Hook poster, which was drawn up by movie poster legend Drew Struzan which I can't help but feel like is a callback to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Is it just me or do they look pretty similar? Before the production went with this poster to promote the film, fellow movie poster maestro John Alvin also had a go at drawing up a poster for Hook. Alvin has illustrated many memorable movie posters such as E.T. and Batman Returns. And his Hook posters are interesting, giving a more bedtime story fantasy vibe about them. They feel softer and less straight up action adventure than the Struzan one. And he seems to be really fascinated by the moon too. I love how in this one the Hook wraps around the moon, that's quite clever. Bonus number two, the trailer featured music from another movie. It's not uncommon for movie trailers to feature themes from other movies, especially if said movie's theme isn't finished yet. However, the Hook theatrical trailer uses the theme from the supernatural comedy The Witches of Eastwick. Let's fly! I guess it makes sense as both scores were composed by John Williams, and despite the fact that The Witches of Eastwick is a completely different movie to Hook, its theme still oddly works for Hook. Number one, despite not so good reviews, the movie was a massive hit. Critics were fairly harsh to Hook and I don't really understand why. It's a fun adventure movie for kids with a good heart, which gives the Peter Pan legend a fresh new approach. Ironically, a common complaint associated with the movie is that it didn't feel original or like it tried anything new, which makes me question if the critics even saw the movie, as it does something entirely new with Peter Pan. It makes him a middle-aged man who has forgotten his legacy and must remember his inner child in order to save his kids with it acting as a sequel to the legend as opposed to an adaptation. So I don't understand the claims that it feels unoriginal. But despite the criticisms, the movie was a mega hit, making $300 million at the box office, and was subsequently the sixth highest grossing movie of 1991. And despite its painful 26% on Rotten Tomatoes, Hook has become a beloved classic adored by those who grew up watching it. The movie has developed a strong legacy over the years, so no matter how much the critics love to hate this movie, its popularity and love that people have for it continues to grow. Overall, I feel like Hook is a movie about reaching middle age and still finding the innocence of youth while being in your 40s in order to still have a magical sparkle in life, as opposed to becoming a soulless corporate machine. It's a movie which delighted and touched a lot of souls, and still does to this day, as people seem to have an endless love for this movie, which I think is a testament to its effect on people. I mean, after all, you don't really hear people raving on about the 2003 or 2019 Peter Pan movies. Anyway, I'm Minty, and bangarang! Seriously, did you expect me to end this episode saying anything else? See ya!